Welcome back to our next episode of The Main Scoop. Today, we're going to be talking about open strategies to mainframe modernization. Joining me again is Dan from Future. Hey, Greg. Good afternoon, day, morning. I don't know. Does it matter what time it is? But we are back, and it's exciting to be here. Good life. Good life. Exciting to be here, having a little bit of fun, and you know, bringing some really thoughtful people in to talk about what's going on in open, open source, a topic that if you ask me, is not only important in mainframe, but is really important across the IT and technology stack. Yeah, and we're actually gonna talk about open broadly, right? When people think about open, they right away go to open source, but it's about opening up communication across applications, across middleware technologies, and involving open source, integrating with middleware that's coming from companies out there as well as homegrown applications. Yeah, so as always, it's fun for us to chat a little bit about it, but this show is all about bringing some smart outside thinkers into the show. So Greg, you want to introduce our guest? Yeah, today we have John Murtick with us. He's from the Linux Foundation and is the project manager for the Open Mainframe Project. John. Awesome. Well, thank you for inviting me to join you both. Um, and excited to talk about open source. It's something I've been doing for over two decades now in all sorts of different levels. And uh, you're right, it's an exciting time in open source and, and lots to talk about. So let's start off. You know, we gave our little spiel on why we think it's important, but you know, give us your view. Why is this open topic so important? It's becoming important because we're seeing organizations, you know, you know, as their software strategy is emerging, they have infrastructure that's grown in a lot of different ways. You know, they've acquired companies, they might have some distributed, they might have some mainframe, they might be looking at edge computing. And, you know, it's a trend that we've seen is forward thinking organizations are ones that embrace that, you know, heterogeneous environment. And the way that this all comes together is through connectivity. And a lot of this is driven through, you know, open APIs to connect these systems together, uh, standards that sort of define what the interfaces should be. And more and more and more, we see the, the bottom end of the stack and, and even kind of going higher up is built on open source from technologies like Linux, Kubernetes, Node.js, programming languages, things like that. It's all built in open source these days. And, and this is a topic we've touched on before, right? We've talked about the heterogeneity, the hybrid idea that people don't go to one technology and move everything else there. It's tying everything in that you've developed over time as well as bringing in the best of the new stuff together. You gotta tie that together. And you don't want those to be brittle APIs or hard coded. Mm -hmm. You want that open concept. Oh, exactly. And it's it's not just sort of about you know business continuity, but it's actually forward thinking. Like you know, companies look at this and say, this is this is a way we can innovate. Like we can be ahead of our competitors. Like anybody could go buy a piece of software off the shelf, and you'd be just as good as everyone else. But that uniqueness of how their infrastructure comes together is actually a competitive advantage for them. It's it's mixing and matching, taking the best, right? Not, yeah. well, I was going to say grabbing <laughs> grabbing a different color shirt to go with a different belt or pants. But yeah. of course, you and I are both in our black shirts today. But it, but it is about combining the best, bringing it together to provide the best outcome and experience for customers. But what I like what he said too is about the innovation and transformation. It's not just about technology. See, we constantly hear, I mean, I've spent almost a decade studying just the digital transformation and what's going on there. And so much of it is more about what's that business outcome? What's that innovation the business goal? driver. Yeah. What's the driver? And technology is kind of a foundational. And being able to utilize open, open standards, open source creates that, you know, elasticity or agility. You know, we love throwing around buzzwords. You know, we love throwing that around when we do mm -hmm. the, uh, the digital, even that word. You know, yeah. I wrote a book on it almost a decade ago, one of my seven books. I just throw that out there. Um, <laughs> and uh, my point was, is I still remember people being like digital as opposed to analog transformation. I mean, like, yeah. you know, what do you mean by that? But what we really mean by that is how do you create? a system that enables rapid change, rapid mm -hmm. innovation of both people and then, of course, the process and technology. And open seems to be just gaining more and more and more momentum as companies are trying to figure out how to do it faster. And that system of ongoing change says transformation is not an action that happens and ends. It's an ongoing process. So you're opening these things up so you can connect them to what you have today and what you developed in the past. But you don't know for sure what's going to be the next technology. 
you want to be prepared to be able to tie that in and leverage it for value to drive that business outcome. So John, talk a little bit about what the Linux Foundation and the Open Mainframe Project is all about. Sure, so the Linux Foundation, it's been around for about two decades and it came together actually with a combination of open standards along with open source coming together. And it's the home for the Linux kernel and over a thousand open source projects from you know, Kubernetes, Node.js, but also in a number of industry verticals like the motion picture industry, the energy industry, the automotive industry. And the idea of what it's about is providing the space for this open innovation to happen uh, decentralized across the globe, you know, from, from, from people between countries, cultures, competitors coming together and collaborating in the open. Uh, and its, it's area is to provide the home and space for that. Uh, within the Open Mainframe Project, it's one of the hosted foundations that's a part of it which solely focuses on the mainframe space and helping provide an open uh, environment for the mainframe community to work together, to build projects, to collaborate on ideas. Customers, uh, partners, everybody. competitors, the whole ecosystem. Students, right? everybody, yeah. like the whole, everything from top to bottom, everyone's coming together and collaborating. A great example of the remote world we live in now is actually okay. how technology and software and open standards have actually set up innovation to take place mm -hmm. with nobody in the same office. Oh, yeah. And as we are starting to see companies trying to figure out this hybrid work future, which is super interesting because you're seeing kind of this tug of war, which I know isn't specific just to the Open Mainframe Project or Linux Foundation, but there are certain parts of the innovation stack that can be done in a completely disaggregated way with the workforce. And there's parts, open has, really created sort of a catalyst for things to be developed in standards. And like you said, people that may not even necessarily know each other are building on each other's work and creating innovation that ends up helping everybody. Yeah, you get the smartest people together. I mean, that's the whole idea. Get the together smart... virtually. Yeah, right? virtually. And once in a while we're getting <laughs> we get together in person. Right. Yeah, we're right. not even actually here. Yeah, we're, this is this is all holograms. I did that. Uh, <laughs> I did that once, by the way. I gave a keynote via a hologram. Oh, that'd be awesome. It was pretty. Nice. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's a unique opportunity because you get the smartest minds together. Um, to create, you know, unique stuff that you not any one company could do themselves. I mean, that's what we see the projects that are brought here. I mean, there's millions of open source projects out there. Linux Foundation hosts, you know, about a thousand of them. But the ones that we focus on are the ones that are critically important to our society. Cloud infrastructure, mainframe, automotive, energy, things like that, that, you know, you any any of the companies that are part of it realize that these are bigger than any one of them and coming together is the only way you solve it and you get those smartest minds in the room and it makes each of the participating organizations like Broadcom, it makes their investment go farther. So and you notice he comes back to automotive. This is a topic we've covered. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a subplot. He's sub got something special in his garage. I think the <laughs> producers probably gave him some hints. He's got a Trans Am. Turbo Trans Am, don't you know? Did you build the turbo yourself? No, no, no. It came straight from PAS, so. Okay. Um. <laughs> well, some of us are tinkerers, and some yeah. of us like to just enjoy the experience. So, yeah. Some of us enjoy the experience of tinkering. So, yeah, no, Tinkerers no, no. and thinkers. Tinker, tinkerers and thinkers, yes. <laughs> well, you know, there is kind of that correlation between yeah. the, you know, the motorhead and the, and, the, and the coder, you know, people that want mm -hmm. to do it themselves and build stuff. And it's different outlet for creativity. Absolutely. So you started to allude to this a little bit, John, but I am interested. You know, can you talk a little bit about what you're seeing in the market, some of the projects that are being built? Are there any any really cool examples on, you know, the OMP that you could share? Yeah, I mean, the Zoe project for us has always been really the, the bellwether way out ahead of doing innovative things with ZOS. And, and you know, and it came to the market with the need for this, uh, this ecosystem to evolve and provide a place uh, that newer technologies could much more easily integrate into the mainframe. Um, but it's also really set the standard of how these competitive organizations can collaborate. I mean, Broadcom, Rocket Software, BMC, IBM, Microsoft, they're all coming to the, bringing their innovations to the table. Any one of them could have built a product on their own with this, but they chose to come to the table directly and work yeah, together. I, I mean, if you, if you think about how, how it was founded and the history of it, the idea that we all had a common vision of where we believed the future was gonna go. And we realized that you needed to open up the mainframe and there was capabilities that needed to be there. Each of us were working in, in on a component or multiple components. And we kind of realized, wow, if we pooled together, if we worked with the community, we'd get so much further faster. So mm -hmm. it really was a few founding yeah. companies getting together and we put it out there in the world and, and you saw other partners in the ecosystem coming yeah. in, customers coming in and yeah. 
and you've been with it since, since day one. Since day floor. one, I've seen it, seen it even before, and it, and it's been exciting to watch, and it's really changed a lot of the tenor within the mainframe community from less of a mainframe or conversation to a mainframe and, and we've even seen that with the projects that have that have been a part of the open mainframe project. I mean, we have some. You know, really historical ones like CBT tape, which everybody in mainframe, I can mention that, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but what we're seeing is these projects, and we talked about, you know, open source being a connective across an enterprise. What we see a lot of our projects doing is filling that gap between the mainframe and the rest of the enterprise. There's always a prime example of that, but we see work in the COBOL space that's happening. We see work in the Z Linux space that's happening in that area. And, you know, it's an area where I think we have a niche to really innovate quite a bit and and we're seeing the biggest market interest come yeah well you definitely have these kind of hybrid ecosystems and the word what is it competition yeah you know it does tend to i would say competition competition oh you got the ump in there for comp (laughs) yeah Uh, yeah but when you say coopetition you're more focused on the cooperation but in the end y'all are still competing you know as an analyst that's what i do i'm paying attention (laughs) to whether or not you're you know successfully competing with one another but we talk a lot not to compete we win you win okay noted (laughs) i'll be in my next report Mm -hmm. but in 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 all serious you know we tend to see when there is a certain amount of competition a certain amount of cooperation that goes on innovation moves forward and who wins are ultimately the the customers the customers ultimately Absolutely. win yeah. because they get better technology, they get better software. When there's too little competition in any particular area, totally it creates a lot of risk. Oh, it, yeah. it ruins the elasticity on the pricing. Um, there's a lot of things economically that go badly. So mm-hmm. you've hit a lot of great points here. As we sort of start to, to wrap up, we always like to kind of say, what's ahead? What mm-hmm. are you looking forward to? What's going to be next for the open, you know, for your, your project, for the Open Mainframe Project and the Linux Foundation? the biggest thing that we're seeing in a lot of our communities and maybe this is a little bit of a covid thing as well but we're seeing the maintainers of a lot of key projects they're overwhelmed there's a lot that lies on them and one thing that we're really training a big focus on is trying to take a maintainer first approach and help how can we help support them how can we help grow their communities how can we you know help you know divvy out the task and how can we help them even you know bring in people they're going to fill in you know some of those roles because that's you know we're a big fan of sustainable open source not flash in the pan right. you know we want these things to continue on well past our time and we're starting to get maintainers thinking a lot of that direction with that the, the one stress that sits on a lot of these maintainers is security um, and particularly, um, we're seeing a lot around supply chain security is becoming a, a really hot topic. You know, things like solar winds and the Colonial Pipeline, all of those were supply chain issues. And um, we have actually a foundation in the uh, Linux Foundation called the Open Source Security Foundation that's, you know, secured, I think, around $15 million in funding, which is going out there to, you know, help work with these projects to make sure that the ones that we depend upon the most have the infrastructure they need. But on top of that is just getting the education to that. And and I think the mainframe community has a great track record in security, um, but helping bring open source into this mix with this community is gonna involve some different thinking, some different approaches, and also just understanding the landscape has changed. And so I see that as, that's gonna be something that's gonna really coming up pretty quickly here. I love that you brought up security. I love how you tied it to a secular, like like supply chain, because I think so many people don't realize. And then of course, open security supply chain people start to think open with risk and i mm-hmm. think that might be an interesting kind oh, yeah. of way to to you know wrap this up too is talk a little bit about you how you're de-risking security by working as in open standards and open source because some people they'll immediately think open and they think uh oh mm-hmm. bigger risk no and it's it's honestly it's the exact opposite the, the you get better code that's built it's out there in the open yes anybody can see it but people can see the problems quickly. With a documented provenance, you know who submitted, yes. where the code came from. Exactly. You can test it, you can look for known issues. Exactly, yeah. I mean, there's just there's so much more rigor that happens in open source. I mean, not that commercial applications don't see that, but all of that rigor is out in the open. You see that, like projects like Zoe have, um, you know, all of their code base out there, but they have SBOMs built for releases. They have security audits that are done. They have all of that that is brought out to the open. Um, the whole you know stack of where the licensing of software comes from. I mean that's pretty intense, and you don't sometimes see that in other areas. So and, and I, I actually agree that that people tend to think 
when they think of open source, they worry about that. Mm -hmm. But they so they they got to really look because yeah. not everybody's doing what they should, right. but they should be looking into the community that is driving that open source and ensure that that security is there. That's exactly it. Yeah. And it's it's something I think some people take for granted. But I mean, we, we really try to take an intentional approach with our projects of having a security first mindset. You know, we get them training, we get them, you know, infrastructure, we get them materials and, you know, help give them guidance and even find peers in other industries that can help them as they're thinking about, you know, what it means to develop secure software. John, it's been a lot of fun having you on. Absolutely. I mean, big, big topic. Lots there. I think you probably covered, you know, the first few percent. A little bit of the percent. iceberg, yeah. And hopefully everybody <laughs> that's out there, you know, can definitely check out the show notes, yep. learn a little bit more about the Open Mainframe Project. And, and John will get you hooked up so they can learn a little bit more about you. Maybe Absolutely. a bunch of new LinkedIn invites coming your way. I, I would imagine so. I feel my phone's already vibrating. Maybe some bad, <laughs> maybe some bad source code sent to you via email. You know what? I'm. I. You should see my source code these days. It's not that great. So well, that's why you're. That's why you're in management now. But uh, that's what you're here He's for. He's not submitting code for the open. No, no, no. Do not take my code. It's. It's a bad idea. But uh, John, thank you so much thank for joining you. us here. Uh, we'll have to have you back sometime soon. Absolutely, absolutely happy to. Thank you. Sure. Thank, thank you. you. Hey. So to summarize the discussion here. The whole idea about the road to modernization is being able to leverage the capabilities you have and bring the latest and greatest technologies, whether they're on platform or off platform together. So you get the and of these capabilities. That is all about opening up while ensuring that you've got the security and provenance. Great example from the OMP. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Always fun to have someone kind of come in that's got the finger on the pulse, that's talking about the projects, that knows what's going on. And then, of course, you and I find a way to get back to talking about cars again. I, and we like learn new to, vocabulary words every every session. I feel like we need to like it in the logo or something, though, because we're going to, you know, we're going to have two audiences. We're going to have tech heads and motor heads. And they're gonna... well, you folks send in if you want us to do an episode all about cars. We yeah, but we'll do, do something about open source programming the cars. I don't think anybody's going to write it. Okay, we're not going to do At least that. not for that. All right. Well, anyway, well, pleasure seeing you again. I know you're really here. He's not virtual. I'm Greg Lotko. Daniel Newman. Thanks for joining the Main Scoop.